Welcome to this presentation. Um, my name is Oscar Hughes. I um, was at the European Commission for about f for five months um, for an internship um, last year, and I'm going to talk about how the translation service there works and a bit about the translation services in the other institutions. But I'm um, not an employee, I'm not a representative of the Commission, so um, what I say is just based on um, my own experience, but I hope it will still be useful and of interest. Um, so, as I'm sure you know, um, the EU is um, one of the largest, in fact, the um, largest um, employer of um, translators in um, Europe with its 24 official languages. Um, in the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, um, the right, there is the right um, for all um, member states to use their language um, and for members of the public to use their language when interacting with the authorities of the European Union. Um, however, within the institutions themselves, um, only, um, three, only three working languages are used. In some cases, it's even less, depending on the institution. Some institutions have only one or two. Um, that's because most people who are, for example, scientists or lawyers or um, n n doing other things um, which aren't related, related directly um, to languages don't have time to learn 24 languages. And so they um, decide to work in fewer. Um, in the past, this, the common language was French, but um, as English has grown in importance and as the EU has expanded to um, incorporate countries where French is um, not the first, not one of the first foreign languages um, taught, um, English has um, taken over m in most, but not all, institutions. So um, translation serves a real need, a need for communication between the outside and the inside of the institutions. However, um, that's not the full um, picture because, for example, um, the European Parliament is very multilingual. MEPs um, work in um, lots of different languages, having been elected by electors in their home country. And so also with, with, within and between institutions, and to some extent there is also a need for um, translation. Und ähm, jetzt ähm, werde ich ein bisschen über ähm, die Übersetzungsdienste in den verschiedenen Institutionen ähm, sprechen. Also ähm, der größte Übersetzungsdienst ist der der Kommission mit ungefähr 2000 ähm, angestellten, also fest an, nein, angestellten Übersetzern. Also die Kommission ist eine eher technische Institution ähm, da, und also ja, und daher sind ähm, die Übersetzungen auch ähm, eher fachlich, ähm, eher ähm, technisch und spezifisch. spezifisch. Und das Parlament hat auch einen Übersetzungsdienst, einen etwas kleineren mit ungefähr 650 ähm, Übersetzern ähm, und also ungefähr 25 pro ähm, Sprache und ähm, die Texte sind ähm, viel politischer. Ähm, Sieht, also die, die Arbeit der Übersetzer in, beim Parlament ist viel vielfältiger. Sie machen also, ähm, sie auch ähm, andere Aufgaben, ähm, zum Beispiel Untertitelung von ähm, Videos. Ähm, sie gehen auch zu den ähm, Sitzungen ähm, des Parlaments und ähm, kontrollieren ähm, das Protokoll, ähm, die, ähm, dass die Sekretäre schreiben. Ähm, also ähm, der Rat der EU und ähm, der Europäische Rat haben einen gemeinsamen Übersetzungsdienst. Also der Rat der EU ähm, besteht aus ähm, den Ministern, der, also die mehrmals im Jahr zusammentreffen in verschiedenen Konstellationen, je nachdem welches Thema besprochen wird. Und der Europäische Rat ist die, die Staats- und Regierungschefs der EU. Der Ausschuss der Regionen besteht aus Vertretern, die von den Mitgliedstaaten nominiert werden, also 350. Und dann hab, also die haben auch einen Übersetzungsdienst, die übersetzen äh, vor allem ähm, Ges ähm, Änderungen von ähm, Gesetzes 
Vorlagen, die die Vertreter der Regionen vorschlagen. Ähm, dann kommt ähm, auch ähm, der Rechnungshof und ähm, der Gerichtshof und dann gibt es, also, ja, es ist offensichtlich, dass die ähm, zum Beispiel Rechtstexte oder ähm, Übersetzungen oder Texte, die mit Finanzprüfungen zu tun haben und ähm, dann gibt es ein Centre de Traduction, diese, ähm, diese, diese Stelle hat nur eine französische Bezeichnung, das ist für die ähm, Agenturen der Europäischen Union und ähm, da übersetzen die die ähm, die Festangestellten ganz wenig, sie kontrollieren nur, was ähm, extern in Auftrag gegeben wurde. Ähm ja, so also kurz zur Kommission. Ähm, die Kommission ist die einzige Institution, also es hat das Initiativrecht das ist, äh, und ähm, setzt die Entscheidung der EU um und ist Hüterin der Verträge. Also ähm, die ähm, Kommission arbeitet hauptsächlich auf Englisch ähm, und daher ähm, sind fast alle Übersetzungen entweder aus dem Englischen oder ins Englische. Und was gibt es noch dazu zu sagen? Ja, ähm, also hauptsächlich wird an der Kommission, wird bei der Kommission ähm, gesetzlich, also ja, werden ähm, Gesetzes Vorlagen oder ähm, also Richtlinien und Verordnungen ähm, übersetzt aus dem Englischen in die anderen Sprachen. Und also es gibt auch Kommunikation mit den Mitgliedern des Europaparlaments und ähm, Teile der Website werden auch übersetzt, aber nicht alles. Also das ist ein, ähm, etwas, eine, eine etwas heikle Frage, ob ähm, alles in allen Sprachen zur Verfügung gestellt ähm, werden soll. Es ist zwar teuer, aber ähm, wird immer wieder gefragt. Ähm, natürlich, ähm, weil es demokratischer ist, aber in, also manche Inhalte sind nur für eine ähm, bestimmte, geschränkte, ges ähm, beschränkte, geschlossene Gruppe ähm, und, ähm, in, in, interessant. So, now I'm going to talk about the um, work the um, Commission the translators do into English, which is interesting because it's somewhat different to um, the work done in the rest of the departments. So in um, most of the departments, um, translation, the main task is translation of internal documents, which were written in English, into the other languages to then be sent to um, other stakeholders or to um, the public um, or to be publish, uh, published or to individual members of the public whereas um, the English um, section receives a lot of correspondence for example from the member states um, and from members of the public um, which have to be translated for comprehension um, rather than for um, publication um, Occasionally there are um, documents which are written internally in French which have to be translated into English, but not so many of them. There is also a growing um, editing service for the texts written in English by um, non-native speakers. Um, there are um, about 25 um, ed English editors um, at the moment, as far as I'm, I'm aware. Um, um, the edit, use of the editing service is completely optional, um, but it's um, certainly advisable, and those who do use it seem to appreciate um, the feedback. That seems to be, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, whereas almost all the other departments at the Commission um, translate almost exclusively from English, the English department translates from a wide range of languages. So, um, here you can see the languages which are translated from on the um, y axis. You can see the number of pages, or you would be able to see if it were um, clearer. Um, um, so, the most wide, most often translated languages and um, German, followed by um, Greek and English and, uh, so Greek, not English, Spanish and French. So, um, the, 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 um, languages of larger countries um, are translated more often, they produce more pages to be translated and um, if there's a political crisis, like there's more translation required um, normally. It depends a bit on the political cycle and events um, going on. Uh -huh. Right, um, now I'm going to... Uh, 
Alors maintenant, je vais euh, vous passer à l'organisation interne euh, de la direction euh, générale de la traduction. Euh, c'est euh, le service de traduction de, de, de la Commission européenne. C'est là où j'ai travaillé. Alors c'est là la raison pour laquelle euh, je vais parler surtout de la, de la Commission et pas des services de traduction des autres euh, institutions, euh, même si euh, j'ai indiqué qu'il y en a euh, beaucoup plus que seulement la Commission. Euh, alors, euh, oui, euh, la, la DGT est divisée en 24 euh, sections linguistiques. Alors, on part du principe qu euh, peut, que, que la plupart des traducteurs euh, sont capables de traduire euh, dans une seule langue et pas dans plusieurs. Alors, et pas plus parce que généralement on euh, grandit dans une certaine société, dans une société où on parle une langue donnée et euh, pour euh, vraiment maîtriser la langue euh, et toutes ses finesses, tout, tous les détails, euh, il faut euh, se concentrer et donc euh, on fait ça. Je sais qu'il y a des pays où euh, il est normal de traduire dans les deux sens, entre um, par exemple l'anglais et le langue du pays, mais um, dans d'autres pays, um, ce n'est pas du tout le cas, par exemple en, en Grande-Bretagne et au, à, à l'Union Européenne, on ne traduit généralement que dans sa langue maternelle. Il y a des exceptions, il y a des, des gens qui sont vraiment doués ou des gens qui sont um, vraiment bilingues à l'origine, um, mais um, c'est plutôt exceptionnel. Et um, donc, um, la... On s'oriente. Ça, c'est le. Alors, le... Alors. Oui. Et ces sections, ces départements linguistiques sont divisés en unités qui sont, qui sont responsables de certains DG. Alors, les traducteurs dans ces unités se spécialisent, se spécialisent dans, dans certains domaines. Ils n'entrent pas généralement comme spécialistes en droit ou comme spécialistes en transport. Ou ils doivent s'occuper quand même de plusieurs sujets, mais ils deviennent spécialistes. Ils arrivent à, à, à connaître très bien la terminologie. De, 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 ces, de, de leur domaine. Généralement, en, en section anglaise, est, on est moins strict. On est moins, il, tout le monde doit être plutôt généraliste. Alors, on essaie de respecter cette division, mais c'est difficile, pour, surtout pour les langues des, des, des pays qui ont adhéré à l'Union européenne en 2004. Et euh, les. Une partie des, des traducteurs est passée à Bruxelles, alors plus ou moins la moitié à Bruxelles, l'autre moitié à au Luxembourg. Et euh, oui, une quantité significative des textes sont traduits par des traducteurs externes. Ça euh, rend euh, le, le service beaucoup plus flexible parce que parfois on, re, on reçoit... Euh, une quantité énorme de textes d'une certaine DG ou pour une certaine combinaison, alors langue de langue source et langue cible, et on ne, ne, ne peut pas um, faire traduire un tout um, avec les ressources qu'on a. Donc um, parfois il faut um, donner des mandats um, à des traducteurs externes. Et il y a des sections de terminologie pour um, chaque langue, pour chaque um, département linguistique. Or, um, je ne sais pas si vous savez um, déjà um, ce que, um, ce que c'est la terminologie. Um, c'est um, alors parfois quand on um, traduit um, un, un texte, on a des problèmes de, um, de terminologie. Alors on n'arrive pas à trouver um, le terme, um, un terme qui um, qui est établi et qui répond exactement au terme euh, dans la langue euh, source. Et il faut absolument être conséquent parce que si on utilise, euh, on commence à utiliser deux termes pour euh, désigner euh, pour le, le, euh, le, même, le, le même comité ou euh, la même institution, les gens vont se confondre très rapidement, les lecteurs. Donc, euh, il y a. Donc, si. si Quelqu'un traduit une, un, un texte et doit décider, on, on, on parle avec l'équipe de terminologie et les autres traducteurs et on, on 
décide quel terme on va utiliser pour une, une langue donnée et puis on ajoute ça à la base de données. Il y a aussi c'est des projets de terminologie. Alors, les terminologistes s'occupent de ça. On, on décide, on va, veut améliorer les, 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 la terminologie pour, je ne sais pas, le domaine militaire, par exemple. Et puis, on... Puis, 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 on on fait des recherches, on établit une, une liste de, de concepts qu'il faudrait indéfinir, rajouter une, un, un terme et une définition. Donc, um, il y a une, des sections de terminologie pour um, ça. Et ici, vous voyez l'organigramme um, de la DGT, ou vous, vous, vous ne le voyez pas, um, parce que um, la qualité de l'écran n'est pas la meilleure. Et alors, mais vous voyez qu'il qu y a à gauche, alors ici, à gauche, à gauche, à gauche, les départements qui sont divisés en unités. Mm -hmm. right. So, um, now I'm just going to briefly cover um, the difficulties of um, translation in uh, the European Commission. Um, one of the difficulties is obviously um, the very specific um, subject matter. So um, there are a lot of financial audits, um, a lot of the texts are very um, technical or they're about um, processes um, which are completely specific um, to the European Union. Um, there, there's a lot of um, very specific terminology. Um, when translating correspondence, it's important to use the same terms, the same phrases as used in um, previous um, documents, so there's previous correspondence, so that um, the people the European Commission is replying to or writing to um, um, know that um, what is being referred to is the same um, concept um, they were writing about, otherwise they could get confused if you use a synonym. So there's um, a lot of need for um, research as a translator, you have to um, look in to um, what phrases and what terms have been used. Um, often documents have been rewritten based on um, other um, documents, or they refer to other documents. You have to use um, the same term, or they refer to laws, um, regulations, or directives, or national laws. In the English section, we've translated a lot of um, national um, legislation. Um, another problem is um, poor um, drafting in English, for example, um, Certain phrases are used and have become established, um, which are not really uh, don't sound natural, or um, which are not the phrases which would be used in an English-speaking context. Um, sometimes there are errors um, in the writing that's norm that normally doesn't cause a problem for comprehension, apparently, but. Um, Uh, translators in um, the non-English units, or all the other units, but apart, other than English, do get frustrated with um, reading um, poorly formulated or incorrect English, and it's not particularly pleasing. Um, So, non mi parolas, io mette pri um, la mastrumado de um, la laboro de la tascoi. Do um, mi clarigos um, kiel um, oni obtenas um, la mandato, oni obtenas um, la, uh, la traduc um, laboron, laboron um, do oni um, kiam iu en iu en generala directeo, do iu um, parto, iu um, de sexio de la commission on besonas um, traducon on il uh, povas mendi di ti homo povas mendi la traducon um, estas um, sistemo electronica sistemo um, portio to oni um, povas enmeti documenton kai um, sendi um, for sendi um, la peton con um, clarigo um, se necesas Poste um, tiu um, demando estas um, post sendita al sendata al um, departamento qui occupijas en um, pri um, la reparti do e um, la 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 borro la, la tasco e kai um, poste onisendas gin al um, 
la unueco da al kiu am okupijas am pri la lingvo kai la temo kai en la ple en la plemulto de la departamentoi am kiu tradukistoi am rekte a ricevas am la taskoin do estas unu homo en la unueco kiu decidas am kiu am devus okupiti pri iu tasko kiu kiu havas la tempon kiu havas am la am konon de la enhavo kiu am konas la lingvon Chefe tiu estas la angla, do ne estas problemo generale. Sed en la angla sekcio pro tio ke ni havas pli da lingvoj, mi ne devus diri ni, ĉar ni ne plu estas tie, mi estis tie nur dum duon jaro. Sed la angla servo havas pli da lingvoj, kaj estas... Yes, es das multiple komplika sektio, do oni mem elektas la taskojn, kaj estas programo en kiu oni vidas, au se oni povas serĉi la fonajn dokumentojn, la dokumentoj kiu povas helpi, kiu povas informi pri la la terminologion au la kontekston, do ekzemple se oni jam tradukis leteroin inter la Europa Komisiono kaj aliaj institutoj en la membraj ŝtatoj, oni trovas en la dokumentoj ĉiuj, en la programo, ĉiujn dokumentojn, kiujn la Komisiono jam tradukis, do oni devas legi ilin antaŭ ol oni traduku. Kaj poste ĉiam estas, preskaŭ ĉiam estas du tradukistoj. Unu tradukas kaj la alia reverkas por kontroli ĉu estas eraro aŭ por fari proponon pri pli bonigo de la stilo, ekzemple. Kaj estas sekretaristoj en ĉiu unueco kiu kontrolas je je kioma horo, je kiu tago oni devas forsendi la dokumentojn al la departamento kiu mendis ĝin. Do estas sufiĉe longa proceso, sed tiu estas garantio, ke preskaŭ ĉiam oni sukcesos tradukigi la dokumentojn ĝusta tempe. Um, so now, I'm, as I'm sure you, most of you are aware, or you already imagined, um, computer-aided translation is um, very widely um, used. So um, I, some of you will have worked with translation um, programs before, so it's the computer-aided translation CAT tools, they're called. Um, so, um, for example, you can put a Word document into the software used at the Commission, which is called um, Trados and Studio, and um, the software segments the document, um, and um, the text appears then on the left in, um, in segments, um, and um, the translator types and the translation into the segments on the right, and if there are um, translations of segments already in the translation memory, and um, then um, they appear um, in the um, column on the right in the cells, and you can accept them or um, refuse them and um, check where they come from. So translation memory is a, a database of all the um, topics, of all the translations which have been done before um, at the European Commission, and it's um, therefore um, quite enormous. Um, yes. And there are other um, programs, for example, for, as I mentioned, for um, receiving and, and transmitting um, the um, documents. Um, and then, when uh, one's after when one finishes um, the translation in the translation software, one then can um, open up the Word document to see how it appears on the page and um, make um, formatting amendments and um, that kind of thing. Um, when um, translating, um, there are a lot of um, useful databases and resources um, to consult, which are not always um, public. So, um, 
um, YATE is, is public, that's a list of um, terms in um, various languages which is um, maintained by the terminologists. Then there are also um, databases of um, as previous um, translations and um, laws um, which can be searched. So um, one can um, copy a phrase, for example, into um, Euromis and then and see how it's been translated before and um, check um, if, for consistency, for example. Um, La Commissione Europea ha anche sviluppato un sistema di um, traduzione automatica, quindi uh, ci sono vari, vari sistemi di traduzione automatica che esistono sul mercato o che sono um, disponibili su internet, ma um, il problema è che um, certi documenti della Commissione Europea e delle altre istituzioni sono confidenziali e quindi um, se um, mettessero in questi documenti, per, per esempio, per esempio um, in sistema uh, come Google Translate, um, sarebbero um, accessibili, um, non sarebbero più um, segreti, um, quindi um, non ha senso, quindi per questo motivo e anche um, per migliorare la qualità hanno sviluppato un um, sistema interno che non è accessibile al pubblico che usa il, il database, no? I, i testi già tradotti um, dalle istituzioni europee e quindi i risultati sono molto buoni per um, i testi di questo tipo, quindi non va bene se metti un, un articolo di un giornale generalmente perché um, è un sistema basato sulla frequenza, sulla statistica e quindi um, le collocazioni che c'è nel sistema sono um, quelle de dei documenti europei o no, dei, dei, dei documenti tradotti dalla Commissione, dalle istituzioni. Insomma, um, quindi um, se, um, la, la, il risultato è molto migliore um, per questi documenti se usi um, un tale sistema, ma è, pe è, è peggiore per um, qualsiasi altra cosa perché la lingua o um, quindi la, la scel le scelte di vocabolario um, sono diverse um, e um, questi, questo sistema di traduzione automatica è usato um, sia dai um, traduttori sia um, dai, um, dai collaboratori scientifici, um, dai, dai specialisti, um, dagli impiegati, dagli impiegati um, nelle sezioni, nei, um, nelle direzioni generali um, per evitare um, il più possibile um, di um, dare mandati di traduzione alla, um, alla, alla DGT perché questo costa soldi alla Commissione. Per esempio, se, prima, pr prima che esistesse la traduzione automatica, um, la DGT riceveva molti um, mandati di um, traduzione di testi um, su um, mo molto basilari, quindi inviti a um, conferenze o um, sì, um, lettere, um, richieste di informazioni um, e ora um, sono questo tipo di, questi testi di questo tipo um, vengono tradotti da, da, da questo sistema, dalla traduzione automatica generalmente, um, che, um, il che um, libera le capacità della DCT per fare um, cose um, più, più, più difficili. No? Più, um, che richiedono um, veramente un, un professionista. Um, e um, nelle, um, nelle altre sezioni, non, me, nella sezione di lingua inglese meno, ma nelle altre sezioni questo sistema aiuta i, i traduttori a essere più produttivi um, perché possono usare um, questo, la traduzione automatica come base per le loro traduzioni. Non fa bene generalmente per l'inglese per, perché ogni testo è diverso, perché non sono um, generalmente le leggi um, europee, um, sono um, lettere esterne, sono um, cose um, più imprevedibili. No? Um, quindi... Um, 
sì, ma per le, altre, per, per, per le altre sezioni aiuta spesso. Per quanto riguarda l'atmosfera, i traduttori, il personale, ci sono più o meno 2000 traduttori, quindi ho, ho scritto 2000 staff, in realtà sono 2500 effettivi e più o meno 2000 traduttori divisi in, in unità di lavoro, in ogni unità ci sono più o meno 30, 40, 50 persone, alcuni, alcuni dipartimenti hanno solo una sezione, altri hanno più sezioni um, e si lavora a 40 ore alla settimana e um, a, a certi momenti um, c'è molto da fare e ad altri momenti c'è poco, quindi dipende um, da, 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 dalla situazione politica, da, da quello che fanno le direzioni generali, dipende um, da vari fattori, um, per, per esempio um, quando um, la Commissione ha preparato un accordo e deve essere tradotto in tutte le lingue dell'Unione per essere firmato. C'è molto da fare, per esempio è necessario dividere il testo e assegnare pagine, certe parti del testo a traduttori diversi per farlo in un giorno, in due giorni e um, un, qualcosa che è molto interessante per i, per i poliglotti um, ovviamente è um, il fatto che um, ci siano colleghi da tutta l'Europa lì um, con cui si può parlare, quindi ci sono tavole di conversazione e, um, molto, uh, più o meno ogni giorno um, o più volte al giorno non si può passare tutto il giorno a partecipare a tavole di conversazione, ma è un, un buon modo di um, praticare le lingue all'ora di pranzo, c'è cioè una pausa caffè di 30 minuti. Um, the, uh, just to say briefly, um, the um, translators are not based generally in the European quarter, so in Brussels they're up in the northeast um, and um, three um, towers, there's also a um, cafeteria there and um, various um, services um, but um, they're not in this you know they're not in the center and they're not in the European quarter so um, translators are somewhat out of and um, the EU bubble and somewhat out of the way of um, the high level um, politics it's not um, directly visible it is visible in the uh, translations and um, some of the time but um, not always um, and the same goes for Luxembourg so um, there's um, quite a lot of EU administration there in certain institutions but um, they're also not in the um, same part of the um, city um, and I'm just going to finish off by um, telling you briefly about um, employment and internships so um, there are um, temporary um, contract and um, permanent staff um, working at and the um, European Commission and at the other institutions who all do um, more or less the same um, job um, but um, are paid um, different amounts and um, the um, competitions, the tests they have to pass and to get em employed not exactly the same so um, every um, year um, there are um, competitions, there are um, jobs are advertised and it's um, possible to enter a competition which includes um, reasoning tests, translation tests um, and um, then some kind of interview but um, if you want to become a um, permanent employee um, there, there are a lot more stages, it's more um, complicated um, and um, it often takes a, a year um, to two years um, there are different um, systems for different um, competitions and um, not every language is um, offered every year it depends on what the commission um, needs so they say this year we need translators for so there'll be five or six languages they will um, list the languages so translators working into those languages as a mother tongue um, can then apply um, and, and they also do offer internships 
um, which are called um, Blue Book traineeships, and traineeships suggest that you will then stay on, but um, that's not um, normally the case. And there's a simpler application process, you just have to submit um, documents um, and um, so it proves that you have um, the um, skills, but there's a lot of competition. So in the first stage, um, um, the um, staff um, looking through the applications um, give points to each aspect of the application. And um, then at a um, later stage, they read um, through the whole thing if you get enough points in the first stage and are pre-selected. And if you get to the second stage, you're asked to um, send in a number of um, certificates and um, qualifications. And there's also a um, programme of talks organised by the traineeships office, which accompanies the um, internship. So, so that's it. That's it. That's it. Yes, yes. So I, I just quickly uh, read out the most popular questions, right? Because we, we, don't have, we don't have time for those. Okay, is it possible to make translations for EU Commission as a volunteer? Uh, no, not as far as I'm aware. It's possible to work for them as a freelancer. So it, the, the agencies and translate for them and um, you can work for those agencies um, or you could so the agencies then have a contract generally for a certain um, period of time or a certain number of um, pages um, well no not, not for a certain number of pages for a certain period of time and you could work for them um, but as far as I'm aware it's not um, possible to work for them as a volunteer I'm sure they'd be very pleased if many people did want to but I think the, the, the level they need is um, very demanding and most people who are capable of doing that uh, would um, like to earn some money. Right, okay next one. Did working in the European Commission involve a lot of mental pressure and time pressure and how much? How do you use to cope with it, mental um, pressure? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it re required that there was a lot of pressure. It was um, fairly relaxed. Um, part of that was obviously because I was a, a trainee, but um, even the um, permanent translators are, are, not, are not always under time pressure. Um, it depends on um, the unit. Some units are under more um, time pressure than others, and obviously it depends on the time of year. Sometimes translators do have to work in the evenings or at um, weekends if there is a lot um, to do, but um, generally the atmosphere is um, really um, pretty relaxed. Um. Okay, considering the rapid decline of translating stuff due to new technologies, do you still think becoming a translator is a good career choice? Uh -huh. um, I think it depends on um, whether you would like to work as a translator or not. I think if you would like to do that, then I think it's a um, reasonable um, career choice. It's um, not always very well paid, so it's very well paid at um, European institutions and a lot of other international institutions, but if you work as a freelancer, um, it's not um, well paid given um, that you, the skills you have to have um, to do it. But um, I don't think it's disappearing because the uh, amount of um, multilingual communication which um, goes on is increasing. Um, and yes, um, technology is getting better, but it still um, needs to be um, at least post-edited. I think there will be a lot more post-editing, but I think th th there's been no sign of a decline um, so far um, in, f in the um, amount of work on the market. So I don't think um, that um, that's something to be worried about in the short term. I don't know what's going to happen in the long term, but I think if it's something you want to do and um, the conditions are um, acceptable to you, um, you have the, um, the skills and the interest and you like um, that kind of work, and then I, it could be a good career choice. It okay, and we have time for uh, one more. Okay, with Brexit, do you reckon the English department will have a greater need for fresh native English translators who are also EU citizens? Uh, that's a very good um, question. I, um, th th it will be difficult for them to recruit um, people because, as uh, yes, we have to uh, um, be an EU um, citizen. Um, uh, 
we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Um, some people think that the EU is going to have to open um, rec recruitment procedure to um, non-EU citizens, which they're allowed to do if they can prove that there's a need and um, there aren't enough, be if, because, for example, there aren't enough um, EU citizens who can um, do that. But yes, um, the um, number of um, posts to be filled um, is not going to decline um, because English, it, the EU has already decided that um, there aren't going to be any changes to the um, translation service after Brexit. Um, so yes, um, I think um, the, the English native speakers or EU citizens will have um, very good chances. Okay, yeah, this is just a, a number. Uh, how many languages do you have to speak to be able to work as a translator in the European uh -huh, Parliament? Uh -huh. Which how many uh -huh. languages? Do you um, it depends. So um, I've spoken mostly about the Commission. Um, it's similar at the Parliament. I'd say you probably. I'm not sure, but you, you probably need to use um, you know more languages at the Parliament. You certainly use more languages at the Parliament, but um, at the Commission, um, most people are working into uh, sorry, into or out of English. So. Um, in most sections, you only need to know English and one other language. Two languages are required um, for the competition. Um, uh, yes, um, however, in the English section at the Commission, you have to work from um, more languages. So most people um, speak several, or, or at least able to read. Some people feel they can translate, but they're not actually um, so um, good at speaking. There are some people who um, know um, over um, 10 um, languages. There are some people who only know um, three or four, but it, it, it varies. Um, some people know, some, some, there are people in the European Commission who um, translate from um, 20 plus languages, but there aren't very many of them. Um, but you, you need at least, the answer, the short answer is you need at least two for the um, competition and um, more of an advantage, and depending on where you want to work. So if you want to work, I don't know, in the Polish session, section of the Commission, you're translating from English all the time, you don't need, really need to know more. But if you're working at the Parliament, where um, the um, work which goes on behind the scenes and the internal work is a lot more multilingual, then um, you do um, probably need, uh, you probably need, or it's at least a major advantage um, to know more. If you're in the English section, as many languages as possible is always um, a, a big advantage. Okay, that's all. We, we only have time for this. For other questions, you can ask us outside. Uh -huh. Okay, because we need to enter the room.